Hey guys, and welcome back to part three of our cellular transport journey. This is going to cover cellular transport, the active cellular transport portion. So as you can see my little picture here, we are now going the opposite direction. In passive, we talked about how we are going from high to low concentration. Now we're gonna be going up the hill. We're gonna be going from low concentration up to high concentration. So today is just the opposite. We are going the opposite direction, which means that a few things are gonna change along the way. So let's get into active transport. This is gonna go with the half sheet of notes for my kiddos. So let's jump into this. So active transport, what is this? It's when we have molecules that are moving across the membrane against their concentration gradient. I also like to think about this as a visual, like against gravity, like my little guy climbing the hill here, we're going from low to high. So here we have molecules moving from low concentration towards high concentration. And because this is not the way molecules naturally like to go, we're gonna need energy to make them go that way. Okay, and the two different examples that we're going to talk about today are going to be protein pumps and bulk transport. Okay, so first we'll talk about protein pumps. So this is when we have a trans, the transporting of small molecules or ions that are going against their concentration gradient or from a low concentration up to a high concentration using ATP, which is just cellular energy. So as we just defined, it requires energy, that energy we call ATP. It stands for adenosine triphosphate. Okay, it's ATP and that is cellular energy. So in order to move things against their concentration gradient, the way that molecules don't like to move naturally, we have to help them out by using some energy. And a protein pump is one of the ways that we can do that. One of the most famous examples of this is called a sodium potassium pump. And I have a more in-depth video on that for my college kiddos, but you guys just need to know that protein pumps are proteins that move things against their concentration gradient from low to high concentration with the input of ATP or cellular energy. Bulk transport is the second type of active transport we're gonna talk about. This is when we are moving a lot of materials, bulk transport. We are moving a lot of materials or very, very large materials. So we have larger molecules, proteins, starches, that are gonna be transported by something called a vesicle. Okay, a vesicle. And there are two main ways that we do this. Endocytosis, which is moving vesicles in. So this is when we are consuming something that our cells are bringing it in to the cell and exocytosis when the vesicles are moving things out of the cell membrane. Okay. So endocytosis means into, it's going into the cell. Exocytosis, exit, exo, it's going outside. Okay. Below, we have two uh, pictures here that are showing you phagocytosis and pinocytosis. These sound like fancy words, okay? Phagocytosis is an example of endocytosis because we're bringing something into the cell. You can see that the cell literally is going to wrap around, the membrane wraps around the solid particle that it wants to bring in and it brings it in, okay? So this is a food vacuole, it's a phagosome food vacuoles. This is a large food particle that the cell is literally wrapping around. It's eating it, cellular eating. It's literally wrapping around this particle and bringing it in. This is bulk transport because it is a large molecule. It's going to require energy. The cell is literally moving. Okay. And this is bringing something in. This is endocytosis. And this particular example is phagocytosis, cellular eating. Pinocytosis is cellular drinking. This is moving in large amounts of water at a time. Okay, so these are specialized types of endocytosis. I like to differentiate pinocytosis from phagocytosis because if you drink a lot of water, like a lot, a lot, a lot of water, what happens? You have to pee pinocytosis, okay? So that's how you can differentiate between those two if that helps you remember that. But they are both types of endocytosis because things are coming into the cell. Exocytosis would be exiting, that's getting rid of a substance, like a waste part product. Okay, next we're gonna talk about homeostasis. Okay, in the very first video, we talked about homeostasis a little bit. Okay, so this is when we have a natural internal, um, internal external balance happening. So this is a process by which an organism's internal environment is kept in equilibrium or it's stable in spite of the changes in the external environment, okay? So some of the examples you guys have heard probably in middle school, 
to regulate your internal temperature, your sweating, which is going to remove excess body heat. You know, down in Texas, it gets hot here. When you're outside, you're sweating a whole lot. Your body is trying to cool itself off. It's trying to maintain homeostasis. It's trying to be in balance. Okay. Um, also, when you are freezing cold, right, your body is going to shiver to try to heat you up. Your skin is going to have little goosebumps in order to try to protect the warmth that you do have. Okay. And insulate you with the little tiny hairs on your body. Um, with water balance, we have kidneys that are adjusting water um, amount in the urine um, based on how dehydrated you are. Um, and a physical response to stress, you have breathing and your heart rate is going to increase, your pupils dilate, you're sweating. These are all ways that your body is helping to protect the homeostasis or the natural balance, fancy word for balance and equilibrium, the stability inside of yourself. Cells do this on a little tiny level, microscopic level. So again, active transport is when we are moving from low concentration to high concentration. This means we're going up the concentration gradient, we're going up the hill, and this is against the concentration gradient. Remember, this is not the way that molecules really like to move. That's why it requires energy. So energy, yes, absolutely, it requires energy. Cellular energy is called ATP. Again, it stands for adenosine triphosphate for those of us that are concerned about what it means. Okay, and some examples, we talked about protein pumps and we talked about bulk transport. Protein pumps, like I said, the most famous example is a sodium potassium pump and bulk transport, we're dealing with endocytosis and exocytosis. So let's look at a few pictures. Here we have a protein pump. It's going to move things against the concentration gradient from low concentration to high concentration, and it requires the input of energy. When we're dealing with bulk transport, we have endocytosis and exocytosis. Things are either moving into or out of the cell. Again, here's another picture of endocytosis, something coming into. Remember, this is called a vesicle. Remember, this is called a vesicle, transport vesicle. So once the cell has literally reached out its little membrane and wrapped around some maybe food particles, right, it's going to bring them in and pinch off to create this vesicle. And in exocytosis, it's exactly the opposite. So we are now going to be sending this vesicle to the membrane to release all of these contents. Again, here we have endo coming in and we have exo going out. And this again is called a vesicle. This again, protein pump, right? We have a protein in the membrane. We are moving things from low concentration to high concentration with the use of ATP, which is cellular energy. Same thing over here. We have low concentration towards high concentration. We have the input of ATP. We got a protein here. This is a protein pump. Okay, so this is going to conclude active transport. Super, super simple. Okay, we're dealing with protein pumps. We're dealing with endo and exocytosis for our bulk transport. And remember that we are going from low concentration to high concentration. And this, of course, requires energy, ATP. Thanks for listening, y'all. See you in the next one.